The future of warfare may not be bombs or bullets, but earthquakes and tsunamis. After all, if you never know a shot has been fired, you may not even know you're at war until you've already lost. March 1967. The Ho Chi Minh Trail. Ground zero in the battle to control the weather. Seeking an edge in the intensifying Vietnam War, the U.S. military launches a bold initiative. Operation Popeye was a weather manipulation program during the Vietnam War. What they wanted to do was seed clouds or create clouds to then cause a torrential downpour on troops on the battlefield. The goal? Increase rainfall and deny the North Vietnamese access to their supply routes. And they did. They extended a monsoon season by 30 days. Officially, the aircraft and their crews were part of normal weather recon operations. But in reality, something far more sinister was going on. And some conspiracy theorists think the government is making it happen again. August 23rd, 2005, the Bahamas. The National Weather Service begins tracking a medium-sized storm heading to Florida. Mysteriously, the unremarkable storm suddenly transforms into a Category 5 hurricane with winds gusting up to 175 miles per hour. Some say Hurricane Katrina was not an act of nature, but an act of war. Hurricane Katrina stopped. She went on a, a very straight path. It's not a path that most hurricanes take. It was almost a beeline. It was a beeline right through into the Gulf of uh, Mexico, aiming right at the heart of New Orleans. That was such a precise hurricane that a lot of people began to wonder, was that being manipulated? and counter weather warfare measures, each of which would be using high frequency radio waves to control small climates over specific areas. And a lot of people think this is exactly the future of warfare. Some researchers who have been studying harm believe they have learned to recognize the warning signs. They're known as harp rings or scalar squares. Now, basically what heart rings are, are these pulses of energy that turn up on radar screens. You will see radar picking up circular image on a radar screen, an intense energy pulse. And then between 48 and 72 hours later, there'll be a major Earth climate effect. Saturday, November the 2nd, the story of Typhoon Haiyan begins. Six days before striking land, it appears as a low pressure area in the Pacific. Slowly but surely, it's heading for the Philippines. Tropical storms, be they called hurricanes, cyclones, or typhoons, depending on which ocean basin you're in, are, are independent storms, if you will. They, they start over warm ocean waters. That is the fuel for these storms. Typhoons form when water evaporates from the warm ocean. With no crosswinds to break it up, the moisture rises and condenses into clusters of thunderstorms. As early as November 3rd, this was looking very serious. It looked like it was going to have a potential to be a very classic monster-sized typhoon. Typhoon Haiyan was the perfect storm. Its speed, its power and the storm surge, a tsunami-like wave, all reached their peak at the moment Haiyan hit the Philippines.
Now the Typhoon plays its most deadly card, unleashing a storm surge against the city. This is just like a 15-foot high tsunami. This actually went off the scale. It was a monster storm. Without knowing it, Paolo and his team are moving patients down and into danger. They have no idea the water is so close. Try to assist our patients and to, to get on the second floor. The People face an agonizing dilemma. Rising water floods ground floors, but with terrifying winds tearing roofs apart, escaping to an upper floor is far from a safe option. The storm surge simply sweeps away weak buildings. In the worst areas, flood water is 20 feet deep. A lot of people are asking me if I think that this current storm that's hitting the Philippines is man-made or being controlled. And I'm going to have to respond with a confident yes. Again, a confident yes. Often look where it comes from, though. When you see the pulse or originate, it actually originates to the north. And it's coming from up here just north of Japan in this direction. Wait for it again. There we go. Coming from there. Well, what's up there? What is there? We know Guam is loaded, but let's go check it out. I'll over and check and see what's going on just north of Japan. Now, the area itself just north of Japan is the Kuril Islands area. It's also managed by China and Russia. They kind of all have a little border there, a little border separation only by a few miles. Um, so let's bring it over. Here's Japan. And let's triangulate our position based upon where the pulse was coming from previously. Okay, here's the Philippines. We'll come down here. Here's Guam. And we've got Space Command, uh, all sorts of stuff here at Guam. And then the pulse coming from up in this direction. Well, it looks like Stanford has a few facilities out here, VLF antennas. But if we come just a little bit north, You've got all sorts of space observatory outposts. You've got uh, even got NASA. You've got Stanford up in Russia. Uh, they're all part of a giant network, and they share facilities somewhat. However, this area here, where the pulse is coming from, there's only a few things actually here. You've got Missile Defense Space Command over here off the coast of Alaska. You've got Stanford VLF, and we've got the Russians. Not too much in China. Let's go check here. Here's our VLF array, part of Stanford. We've got the Hokkaido Super Darn. Super Darn is high frequency radar that's used with another program called SPEAR in conjunction with SPEAR for polar heating and observation. So they will observe the heating that's being done by SPEAR using Super Darn. Super Darn looking like a radar up over the North Pole, over the horizon radar, and they will use spear to heat an area to hundreds if not thousands of degrees and observe the plasma using the radar from Superdarn. Mimic, and Mimic is again the more integrated microwave imagery, and we'll click on the Mimic TPW, and we'll go look at the West Pacific. All right, again, here's our current storm currently hitting the Philippines. Let's go. This current massive storm, the largest in human history, starts its rotation as soon as the pulse happens. It's undeniable. Look at the date. Wait for it. There we go. Okay, and it's going right up to here. So that would put it north of Japan, up to the Kuril Islands. Let's go back over here. And that reduces the culprits much 
further. So somewhere in this region here. So we've got US Space Command and some outposts here. Let's see what we've got, if we've got any pictures. Oh, okay, okay. Definitely we do. We've got, um, let's see. Satellite Communications Facility. There we go. All right. God bless Jim Lee for putting that together. Satellite communications going on out of there. Let's see if we got a better picture of this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got dual domes. And what else do we have? Cobra Dane radar. Twelve, fifteen to 1400 megahertz. A series of volcanic chains, a couple VLF antennas, which we know it's not VLF showing up, it's high frequency. So there you go, guys. Is, are they responsible indirectly? Maybe it's satellite communications gone wrong. Maybe they don't mean to be causing it. You hope that's what it is, because if not, they are just responsible for causing a microwave pulse, which went over the same area at the same time that the storm formed. If HARP is capable of controlling the weather, what else can it control? And what if the target isn't a country, but just one person? Some experts think that hidden in those rays could be a message. Basically, all the way back in 1994, the Air Force conducted an experiment using radio to try to put thoughts into the brains of test subjects. Could sound waves implant certain kinds of emotions into test subjects? Is there real science behind this, or is this a tin hat? Well, the answer is there is real science behind it. The Air Force denies any such program exists. Basically, the brain is an electromagnetic device. Thoughts, what we call thoughts, ideas, visions, all move around our brain, inside our brain, by electrons. If you can interfere with those electrons in certain ways, what do you create? Panic. You create light. And it wouldn't be the first time the military has dabbled in experiments with mind control. Former U.S. Defense Secretary William Cohen makes a chilling admission. Others are engaging in an eco-type of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. It's real. And that's the reason why we have to intensify our efforts. William Cohen, former U.S. Defense Secretary. Almighty God and Father, Thank you for giving us your beloved Son to save us. Precious Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And firmly believe that you offered your life as a sacrifice on the cross of Calvary to save and redeem me from the bandages of sin. With all the curses and penalty attached to my sinful nature, I surrender to you all the sins that I have committed. Wash me with your holy blood, and I receive by faith my new life in you. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, write my name in the book of life. This I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Diyos amang makapangyarihan sa lahat, na may lalang ng langit at lupa at ng bansang Pilipinas. Ako po ay tumatawag sa inyo bilang isang Pilipino na namamagitan para sa aming bayan. Inaamin ko na nagkasala kami sa iyo, pati na ang aming mga ninuno at mga namumuno sa aming bansa. Dahil sa aming pagsalangsang, lumaganap ang salot, kahirapan at kaguluhan. Nagbabalik loob po kami sa iyo at kumikilala sa iyong kapangyarihan. Sumasampalataya ako, Panginoong Jesus, na tanging ikaw lamang ang aming tagapagligtas. Ikaw lamang ang makapagliligtas sa amin sa tiyak na kapahamakan sa kapangyarihan ng katubusang ginanap mo sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Kaya't lumalapit kami sa iyo bilang isang bansang tinawag sa iyong pangalan. Dinggin mo kami, patawarin, at ituro mo sa amin ang landas na dapat naming tahakin. Ang kapangyarihan nawa ng iyong banal na dugo ang magligtas sa aming sambahayan sa paglaganap ng kasamaan, salot at kalamidad. Itinataas din namin sa inyo ang pangulo ng aming bansa, sampu ng lahat ng namumuno sa pamahalaan. Sahin mo kami sa kapangyarihan ng buklod ng Espiritu Santo upang ang kapayapaan ang maghari sa aming bayan. Ipinagkakatiwala namin ang bansang ito sa iyong mga kamay. Dinggin mo kami, lingapin mo kami, alang-alang sa iyong pangalan. Yamang ang bansang ito ay itinalaga mo para sa iyong kaluwanhatian. Ito ang aming samad dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus na aming Panginoon. Amen.